Hey everybody, it's me Rochelle, and you're listening to my podcast, Yet Here I Am, and we are back today. We had a um, a lot of questions, comments, and reactions to the podcast called Predator, Scum of the Earth, and so we're going to go ahead and, you know, answer those questions or respond to those comments and reactions and I am here with my co-host, Carol. Hey, everybody. And she's going to help me today. So it's going to be fun. And, um, you know, I'm a little radical. So, you know, don't get offended. <laughs> because if I say something, you know, out of the way. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to read the questions. And we'll answer accordingly, you know. Uh, Carol can go first, and then I'll go after her, or, you know, whatever. But let's get started, okay? And the first one says, I had a man abuse me from 3 to 18. He was my mother's boyfriend. I still have a hard time with relationships and don't know what to do about it. Maybe I can find a group or something. And the username is LDVD. Okay. Well, there are groups available. I suggest that you talk with someone from a domestic abuse group or an agency in your community or state. Um, They would probably be able to refer you to an appropriate group. If you're able to talk with your mother or another female family member, it may help you or uh, female friends, a friend of the family. Um, Whatever you do, don't let anyone try to lay a guilt trip on you because none of this was your fault and you're the one who is the victim. That is very true, LDVD. And just my spin on it, you know, you can find a group and stuff like that. But, um, you know, your mother is something else, you know, and I hope that you get help and um, you can talk to somebody, you know. um, I don't know how old you are now, but you said 3 to 18, so I'm not sure if you're still 18. But you're still having troubles in relationships a hard time with relationships I I definitely can understand that yeah so you know you got to tell somebody about it if she's still doing it you know and whatever age you may be you got to tell her to stop it's time to step up and it may not be an easy task but you know you have to do it be strong Yes, be strong, right, and be strong. we would like to hear what happens with you, so yes, please, we get would. In, please get in touch. Okay, and the next one. Whatever happened to the girl who hit her stepfather with the lamp? And that is by K-A-N-D-Y-L. <laughs> I laughed at this one. It's not. It's not a laughing matter, but you know... <laughs> my first thought on the whole thing was that she should have had a knife in hand and gone <laughs> for it. She's a very strong-willed young lady, and she has been able to recover from the trauma. The man never touched her again. <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, if I was him, I'd steer, steer clear as well. Um, <laughs> you know... I just hope that you candle, uh, candle, are okay. Nobody's messing with you or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you just had a question, or yeah, just a question, so we answered it. But yeah, you know, take a lamp and clock him. I bet you'll never come in the room. He or she'll never come in the room again. Uh, so that and definitely I, was, was a good thing. I would assure you that. Uh, if someone asked why the man was wearing a lampshade on the top of his head and blood streaming down his face, I'm pretty sure that if the police were called, 
um, he's not going to say that she did it. And if they did, and if they did, and she said he started it or some, you know, some sort of a thing, it's all over for, for the man. Yeah, right. They don't fool around with crap like that. Right. Exactly. All right. We got another one. It says, hi, Rochelle and Carol. I am 16 and I'm currently being molested. I want to die every time he comes to my room. How did your friend get the courage to fight back? And that's by WBT17. Oh boy. Well, sweetie, he, she was she was extremely aggressive and a no-nonsense kind of girl. In short, she took and still takes no shit from anyone. What I suggest that you do is call Child Protective Services agency in your community and a report the abuse to them i hope and feel that they can help you or guide you in the direction you also may consider talking to another family member and an aunt grandmother or people such as that uh, friends of the family another thing and i think that that's what my friend did uh, I suggest that you try to blockade the door to your room, wedge a chair under the handle or the door, the doorknob or whatever works. Uh, I think that's what she, one of the things that she may have done to, to try to stop you. If anybody questions you about it, then you can certainly say, well, yeah, this is why. And if they, they believe you, that's great. If they don't, don't take any don't take any shit from them you know they're not at all honey god bless you and give you strength and courage it's none of this is your fault no it's not sweetie and uh you know you got to get up the courage to call child protective services and if you call them and contact them and tell them what's going on i'm pretty sure they'd be over there asap you probably wouldn't even have to wait 24 hours you just like you got on here and asked us the question you can get on the phone and talk to them and do the same thing and that's their job is to protect you so um and you may be taken away but i mean i'm sure you're going to be glad that you were taken out of that situation and if there's a family member that you could stay with they'll probably let you go over there you know so you don't really have to be away from the rest of the family that you might have just away from the person that's molesting you. But I wish you luck and I'd like to hear uh, what comes of this. Thank you yeah, so much for sharing that. Okay. The next one is, is that all that happened to you, Carol? And that's by Ju Lex. Oh dear. No, that was not all that happened to me. I was date raped in college, but I was able to overcome the guilt and trauma on my own. I never reported it because I was too embarrassed. I never talked about it, even with my best friend at the time. I was also molested by a teenage cousin when I was around nine or 10 years old. I didn't know what he was doing to me. It didn't feel good, nor did it cause me any pain. All I felt was confusion and why he told me not to tell my mother or anyone else. Mm. That's crazy. I'm sorry you had to go through that, Carol. <clears throat> okay. He's dead now. Oh. Hey, problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still sorry you had to go through it. That's horrible, horrible, horrible. I'm a strong woman. Yes, thank God. Yes, thank God. Okay, the next one is, I'm a 13-year-old and my mom makes me sleep with her. Oh boy. I have to give her oral sex and suck her boobs. Who can I ask for help? Sad boy 12. Bless your heart. Oh boy, it just makes you want to vomit. Yes. I, oh... 
I'm so sorry this is happening to you, Sad Boy 12. Please contact Child Protective Services or a similar agency in your community and tell them what is happening to you. Are you in contact with other family members? Perhaps you could talk to them. Do what you can. I know you're only 13 and that's why uh, possibly Child Protective Services is, is the best route for you to go. But you are being abused and you are not to blame for it. You can't, you have no control over this situation. So have faith, have courage, sad boy. And sad boy, I'm sorry uh, to hear that you have to go through that because you should not have to do that. And you should not be learning anything like that at this a- at that age. My Shit. daughter is one year older than you and I would just, psh, that's just not not a good thing. But yeah, if, you, if you're going to school, because right now I know if all the kids are being um, homeschooled, you can also, you know how you can contact your teacher? You can also send her an email and, you know, and That's that true. way you don't have to talk to her and just say, you know, I need help. I want to stop. I want her to stop and she won't and they'll get involved. They're going to contact Child Protective Services for you. And like I said about the other comment or question, you can, um, they'll be there before 24 hours. I can bet you that. They're not going to let you sit there and suffer. It doesn't matter if she's your mom or what. Absolutely. It's not going to happen. And if you have other family members, you know, that you can talk to or that you feel comfortable talking to them, you know, go ahead and reach out to them and let them know it's not your fault that she's sick like that. That's just sickening. I had never thought about um the younger the younger ones you know the under under 18 that they could contact their teachers mm-hmm. teachers are there they are there for their kids and mm-hmm. they listen if they're a good teacher they listen yeah and that's not a joke when a kid you know i mean the teacher would probably be not. shocked beyond shocked like oh my gosh and get that guy away from, or your mom, or if it was a man, woman, whatever, they get you, get them away from you. Like Absolutely. ASAP. Well, we'd like to hear what comes of that, and we hope you stay safe. And oh, you know, yes. There's a lot of uh, resources for you, and I hope somebody can help you. Definitely. They can. I know there's there's people out there that can help you. Yeah, that's just horrible. Mm-hmm. And then this question says, was your mom molested too? And that's by Tim for you. Yes, my mother was molested by her dad. Uh, she never elaborated on what the molestations were, but there were several over the her formative years, I guess. She was also molested by a cousin, and she had told me that uh, she was she was date raped when she was a teenager. Um, there, you know, there may have been other episodes, but she didn't go into them. Uh, you have to understand that back in that era, I mean, that was that was. Uh, like in the 1940s in the 1930s and 1940s women were more closed up about anything regarding sex or anything regarding the human body nowadays we are very open we can speak about it and we do but then mm -mm, not at all and it took a lot of excuse me it took a lot of my mother to tell me some of the pain that she had been going through and she she suffered with it her whole life up until the day she died uh, two years ago 
and you know that's it's it was well i'm sorry <laughs> i regress it's just um, an awful time for women that they weren't able to talk they were often they were often um, discouraged because it wasn't proper uh, women were not respected in those days as they are more inclined to be in, in spe- respected now so my grandmother oh she never talked about anything that had anything to do with sex Mm-mm. that was totally taboo okay it's hard to get over you know something like that it was for it was for my mother and she never did but my mother was not a strong woman yeah and i tried to help her with things and possibly that's why she did open up to me more but damage that's that's done when you're in your young years and up and through it takes an awful lot to work through it mm-hmm. to pull it out and to work through it it takes an awful lot she wasn't able to do that i'm glad times have changed boy yes i i believe so too they've gotten worse in some aspects but you yes. have more people that you can you know reach out to you mm-hmm. have more resources than you did like you said back in that day exactly there were no resources her mother didn't believe her that was the resource and well there you go well, thank you for your question tim for you yes okay and the next one i am embarrassed i am pregnant now by my uncle i don't know what to do and that's by PLS help. Oh, well, dear, please help. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. Have you talked with your mother or another female member of your family or even a female friend of the family? There is help out there for you. Again, I suggest that you contact Child Protective Services or a similar agency. I'm going to assume that you're a child. I you don't say your age, so I'm just kind of assuming that you're a child. Um if you're not a child, if you are 18 or older, you can always contact Adult Protective Services and report the incident. And uh they could help you. So it's just, you know, just that. Keep in mind. Um, as to how to handle your pregnancy, it needs to be discussed with your mother or another female member of the family. Uh, you truly have nothing to be ashamed of. You did nothing wrong. You were a victim of your uncle's lust. An ugly person. All the blame falls on him and he should be arrested and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And that's right, please help. You can ask for help. You have CPS, Child Protective Services if you're an adult, APS, <laughs> adult adult protective services so you have two options there and you can get them convicted of something I mean you can you know speak to the police officers you can you know if you have somebody there that's willing to help you then that's the best thing and they can get you to take care of what you need to take care of you know and I mean, I hope you could find somebody to talk to because, you know, time's ticking while you're pregnant, you know, and um, you won't, as you get further and further into your pregnancy, you won't have that many options. So, depending how far along you are, but, you know, it is his fault, not yours, and he should be arrested and prosecuted, 
And hey, I say, let's go for a lobotomy. Hey, let's bring that back. Let's <laughs> yes, tell definitely, it. boy. Yeah, talk he'll about, never touch anybody else. I could tell you that. Talk he'll about never touch to have a knife. <laughs> These people, I just. Ooh. He won't be able to keep his self from drooling, so he would never <laughs> be of any hurt to anybody else if he had a lobotomy. But we know that's probably not gonna no, come it's... back. Just remember all all mirth and kind of giggles that we do. Please, we do feel your pain, and and we know that you're suffering, and we know the shame that you are feeling. But just know that you didn't do anything wrong. You were a victim, and it's time to uh, open up that that box and and take care of that beast before yeah. he does something to someone else mm -hmm. that's very true okay and then we have oh this is a good one okay. uh well i wouldn't say really good but this is going to be interesting i am an abuser and i can't seem to stop i know it's not right but how do i stop I may just turn myself in, and that's from shame. Hmm. Dear shameful abuser, you definitely need help. How can you say that you know it's not right? Then go ahead and commit another crime. Do you have no control over your bodily functions? Over your mind? Do you have... Who's in control of your mind, if your body? If not you, who? What is forcing you to do these terrible things? Jeez, I suggest you immediately get in touch with a counseling center and start treatment. I agree, Shame. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's actually very pathetic. You know that you're doing wrong. And God bless these children that you're hurting or that you have hurt. You know, you're going to mess them up. And you need to do something. You need to go to the police station and turn yourself in. You need to go into some kind of counseling center and turn yourself in. Tell them what you've done. You know, you're, you're going to answer for that. Yes, you will. You're going you're gonna to answer for that. I pray for the kids that you you messed with. I really do. Or that you're messing with. You should be shaming yourself. Shame. Okay. And the next one is, I was abused and I am now the abuser. I have messed up so badly and I know it's wrong. But I can't seem to stop. And that's by B-Y-U-R-T-M. <laughs> and another person who knows it's wrong but can't stop. Yep. Since when did self-control take the back seat to sanity? But this one has indicated that they were once abused and now they are the abuser. Mm -hmm. um, BY whatever, it's TM. Do you not remember anything? Do you not remember how embarrassed and confused you were? When you were abused? Do you not remember how you felt afterwards? Did you feel dirty inside and humiliated? That's a lot of what these people are, the children or whatever it is that you're abusing. I assume it's children. Y'all prey on these, these little kids. Do you not remember dread, dreading seeing that person who abused you come anywhere near you? And now you are doing the same thing to some other hapless victim? What the hell are you thinking? Hey, both of you people, Shame and BYTM, you, got, you guys need to seek God's forgiveness and the forgiveness of your victims. You have stripped them of human dignity, which is a God-given right to everyone. You have abased them in the worst possible way. It's not my usual behavior to condemn or, for example, judge anyone. 
and I don't want to do it. But your crimes are against humanity as well as against yourselves. Yeah, yourselves. You're condemning yourselves. Stop the behavior. Stop hurting the helpless. Start by seeking help and the redemption of your souls. When you stand on the edge of the abyss, you will be held accountable for all of your actions. There will be no excuses and no winks of the eye. Jeez. Oh, and B B Y U R T M. Just because you were abused doesn't make it okay to become an abuser. You have to stop that cycle somewhere. And I hope it ends with you. And I pray for the children, whoever that you've abused. And you need to make it stop. You need to do something. You don't just continually hurt somebody and you know it's wrong. That makes you make no sense. Something is wrong with you. And I'm going to judge you and say something's wrong with you. And you should be shaming yourself. Just like the other one up there that we were just talking about. Shame. You both should be shamed. And I really hope that you find some way to get some help. You know. And you know. And I think a lobotomy would work for you as well. Okay. All right. And we are going... Oh, okay. We got another one here. Yeah. Uh, after we take a breather from the last one, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I need to <laughs> breathe, breathe. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, be kind of stirred up. It's an emotional subject, and I can't stand to see when God's angels are abused. And that's what I consider children. They're angels. Yes. Yes, they are. Put in our care to take care of them, to nurture them, to help them develop. They're not put here to abuse and kick around and, and uh, yeah, that other the crap that you guys are doing. Jeez. <laughs> breathe, breathe. I know. I might have to calm down a little bit and, you know. <sighs> So I can go on to the next question, which yes. is like, they need us. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I relate to the guy who was victimized by his dad. I am 21 and mine still does it to me. And his name is GMR14. Gamer14, maybe? <laughs> well, I guess you can kind of throw in some vowels there any, what, anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. Well... Dear GMR14, you don't say what your dad is doing to you, but my spirit bleeds for you. My friend's dad victimized him by continuously insulting him and telling him he was worthless and would never be anything. And this was when he was an adult. When he was a child, it was sexual abuse as well as just beat the crap out of him physically. You don't say if your dad is sexually abusing you or emotionally abusing you. Both crimes have the same effect on the victim feeling defeated and completely unable to function. You've made the first step toward overcoming this predator and that's what your dad is. He is a predator. You've opened the door on that horrible dark room. At 21 years of age, you are able to leave home if you haven't already. I suggest that you cut all contact with your dad, even move to another city. That's what my friend did. Do whatever it takes to remove yourself from that beast. And that's what he is. He's a beast. And this is what my friend did too. It takes time and perseverance and especially emotional support from understanding friends and family. If you have siblings, it's entirely possible 
that he victimized them too, maybe still does. Do whatever it takes to establish the fact that you are now a grown man and you don't fall under his control anymore and that he has no power over you. That's what these people people want. They feel that they have power over you. And when they beat you down, you know, that, that makes them feel good because they got power over you. Well, smash that. You don't need it. And you don't have to ever live with it anymore. God bless you, GMR 14. Be strong and diligent. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, GMR 14. We will keep you in our prayers, and I hope that you're able, you know, to deal with this. You're 21 now, and just like Carol said, it's try to stand up to him, and he can tell him, you're done. You're done hurting me, and that's a long time. You know, you're 21 and an adult, and he's still messing with you. Whether it's, you know, physical or emotional, it still seems like it's one and the same. But you should um, definitely try to get help. There's lots of counseling places, groups, things like that, that you can uh, go to and talk to people. But just stay strong, okay? And let us know how that, you know, turns out for you if you can. And then we got a comment. I am praying for everyone. God bless. And that's by Not Now. Thank you very much for your prayers, Not Now. As you have heard, there are many who suffer, and all prayers fall upon our Father's ears. God bless you and yours. Thank you so much, Not Now. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, and the next one we have is, This is so sad. I am in tears. And this is by Jesus Forever. Oh, dear Jesus Forever. Yes, it is very sad, and we've only just scratched the surface of how widespread and deep the trauma really is. It's my belief that there are very, very few families that have not been touched by this crime. God bless you, Jesus forever. I have a little closing, uh, this was the end of, of my part of it here. But I have a little closing thing that I wanted to, to say to those that I suggested that they contact Child Protective Services or a similar agency. I'd also like to suggest that they talk to the pastor of the church that they attend. If they don't go to church, then seek out a church and talk to that pastor. Whatever it takes needs to be done to start the ball rolling to stop this abuse and once again yes i'll remember about uh, contact if you're younger contact your teacher in any way you possibly can reach out to to her or him and tell them what's going on teachers care they're not your enemies okay that's very good advice and we appreciate all your guys' comments, questions, and reactions to the podcast, Predator, the Scum of the Earth. Um, we have quite a few uh, personal messages that uh, we're going to have to do a part two on that. We weren't able to get to all of them today, but we will. We're not just going to let you, you know, out there in limbo. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll do a uh, another one until you know we're done with all of your questions because this is a really widespread thing and we just need to try to help if we can and you know you guys are a lot of you are really young and you need somebody to you know fight for you so if we can be of any help just send us a personal email message whatever you'd like um, 
you don't have to comment on the page because this is kind of private, you know, for you. And so you might be com more comfortable with the personal message, which is where we're getting all our response from. So, um, and we're fine with that. You do not have to put it under anything for the world to see. Okay, and we'll, we'll be here for you as best we can. And thank you so much, Carol, for joining us again. Thank you very much for having me, Rosha. No problem. All right, guys. And I don't have a quote ready for you guys, but maybe <laughs> Carol has one. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I am going to refer back to the original broadcast or podcast and I'm going to repeat the quote that uh, I put in there in the first one. Denial can be a most useful temporary shield. Unfortunately, such flimsy armor will not last a lifetime. It is best to face your past and do so quickly before the past returns to face you. That's a good one, Carol. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that. And everybody, we will speak to you again on the next one. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.